Hi, welcome back to Hot Stove and good morning to you, JP Morosi, live from Grapefruit Media Day. You're at Yankee Camp. Who is happier than you? I see the smile. If I know you, you've been schmoozing all morning long. You've been talking with uh, managers and players. Aaron Boone addressing the media about health concerns for the Yankees. Good morning. How is it there? And what did you have to say? Yes, Lauren, good morning. Aaron Boone will be speaking later today as well as part of Media Day. He actually first met the media yesterday here in Tampa, Florida, and there was a lot of conversation about the lineup for the Yankees in 2024 and putting 2023 behind them. I think one of the, the major questions, of course, is how is the top of the Yankees lineup going to look? A lot of conversation. Will it be Soto first, then Judge? or vice versa. It appears that it will be Soto second and Judge third. And there was also a lot of conversation yesterday about the man who the Yankees expect and hope will lead off. That is DJ LeMayhew. He's had some injuries the last couple of years, but let's take a listen for a moment to hear what Aaron Boone said about his initial look at DJ LeMayhew this spring. DJ looks really, really good. And I'm really excited where he's at. And I think Whatever struggles he's had at different times over the last couple of years, they've been physical in nature. And I think he's in as good a place as he's been in the last couple of years. I think a healthy, productive DJ, you know, from an offensive and position player standpoint, puts us in a really good spot. If we can solve that leadoff spot, and look, I, I mean, I want it to be DJ, and hopefully it is, but certainly would... Alex Verdugo up there is a possibility. I feel like if that leadoff spot gets settled, then we have a chance to be a really special offense. Lauren, listen to those words. A special offense, they believe, for the New York Yankees this year. I was actually looking up these numbers last night, Lauren. Over the last three years, the number one and number three players in the entire sport in terms of OPS+, plus are in this lineup right now. Wow. Aaron Judge, number one. Juan Soto is number three on that list. Number two is out in Dodgers camp. Uh, I believe his name is Otani. So that is that is how good this Yankees lineup could be. The number one and number three hitters by OPS Plus in the entire sport over the last three years. I think as much as the Yankees were disappointed in themselves a year ago, Lauren, they see a clear path to getting better. Now, Anthony Rizzo, you see his name on there too. This team, as Aaron Boone said it himself, has a chance to be special. And he also used, Lauren, this phrase yesterday. He said a couple different times that we had sand kicked in our face a year ago. Okay. They don't like the way the last year ended. And so you've got a very talented team who is also very motivated. Look out, American League East. Also, will they stay as currently constructed or add maybe an arm or two? We will see Astros added. Yeah, they did. Josh Hader is in Houston. And for me, JP, even before he got there, they had one of the best closers in the game in Ryan Presley. There is a new plan, I understand. What is it? It is. How about this for Joe Espada right before camp begins? <laughs> tough decision for a first-year manager. Down. Who's going to get the ball in the ninth inning? Exactly. He announced yesterday it will be Josh Hader with Ryan Presley now moving into the eighth inning. Now, both Espada and Hader met with the media yesterday and talked about this. Hader said that his relationship with Ryan Presley is excellent. We'll, I'm sure, hear from Presley here in the days to come as well. But you think about this. A year ago at this time, the closer for Team USA was Ryan Presley. So when Mark DeRosa had a choice of any American relief pitcher to pitch the ninth inning, he chose Presley. And now I Presley's really going to have the eighth that. inning for his own team. There you go, d -Row. And so now uh, one other part of this is very interesting, of course, is that Presley is coming up on a contract year. We also know this about Presley, one of the most respected and revered teammates and people in the game. You talk to any teammate in Houston, only glowing words about Ryan Presley and his consistency. Hader, of course, comes back to a team he once pitched for in the minor leagues and formulating what we believe to be the most formidable 8-9 combination oh, yeah. we have seen in a long time. So the Astros, again, we talked about the unfinished business of the Yankees. The Astros saw their in-state rival Rangers win the World Series. They want to be the last team standing in 2024. I love that Josh and Ryan spoke beforehand, right? There seems to be a good vibe between the two. I love this time of year, JP, because we get to hear plans, right, from managers, from players, and Bob Melvin talking expectations with his lineup. What did he have to say about it? 
Right now, we believe Jung Hoo Lee will be batting leadoff, and we can't wait. It'll be about a month from now, of course. The Padres and Dodgers play in South Korea, the Seoul Series. We can't wait for that. But, of course, the Giants, they're going to welcome one of their highest-profile free agent signings ever in Jung Hoo Lee, of course, number 51 for a long time, the, the number he wore uh, in Korea in honor of his favorite player, Ichiro Suzuki, also a leadoff man. So we'll see Jung Hoo Lee likely batting leadoff for the Giants. And again, the Jorge Soler signing, not yet official, but that is new news this week. And I really think the Giants, Farhan Zaidi, Pete Putella did a very good job to bring in Soler at a number they were comfortable with because you see the left-right balance. There's been a shortage of 30 homer power that we've talked about for a long time going back to the age of Barry Bonds. And so you bring Soler in, You've got Jung Hoo Lee as an elite table setter who they believe and are confident he can play center field at the major league level. It's a big center field in San Francisco. We know that. That's going to be a key part of his adjustment is handling that expansive center field there in San Francisco. But again, the confidence from Bob Melvin that Jung Hoo Lee is going to be his leadoff man as a rookie for the Giants. Wait, why is Soler not official? Just physical stuff. Exactly. We're waiting to get that uh, that news coming out here this week. And again, that, that will that will be handled here okay. as, as time goes That's on this happening. week, Lauren. But yes, the expectation is exactly. Solaire will be the cleanup man for the San Francisco Giants. Okay, and West feels different, right, with how the Diamondbacks performed last postseason. JP, a lot of love around this game for Charlie Manuel. So when we saw a photo of him, this is it, at Philly Spring Training, it just felt was heartwarming for all of us because when he got sick, it seemed like being around the game again was his goal. How's he doing? Brought a huge smile to my face, Lauren, to see this photo. Charlie Manuel arriving. Uh, a great piece by Matt Gelb that he wrote here in recent months about Charlie recovering from his health challenges in, in recent months. And we talk about the appreciation of being here and, and what a, a great person in the game of baseball Charlie Manuel is. You love talking hitting with him. You love talking life with him. And so for him to be doing better and, and back where he belongs, which is at spring training, hopefully in uniform shortly, uh, he could hold court and tell stories with the very mm. best of any manager that I've ever covered. And just to see that photo of him walking in there in Clearwater, Florida, not far from where I'm standing right now, uh, brought a huge smile to my face. And I know for many around the game as well. So Charlie, Great to have you back. Your baseball gets in your soul, doesn't it? You're going to see your Tigers before you leave, yes? Are you excited? Just as yes, a fan? Yes, of course. Or are you now, working? Now listen, my, my mom, well, uh, both, I suppose. My, my mom is as excited about this Tiger season as any season in the last 10 years. I have, I've got a notebook full of recommendations <laughs> that she is giving to manager Hinch, so I'll be sharing those with AJ tomorrow. <laughs> my mom's still wondering why Max Scherzer isn't a national. I'm like, Mom, let it go. <laughs>